So, a week or so ago, Wonder Woman 1984 released worldwide in both cinemas and on HBO Max. When the first film was released in 2017, it was a worldwide phenomenon. Grossing $822 million and sitting with a Rotten Tomatoes score of 93%, it's safe to say the film was a resounding success, and is still one of the highlights of what's been a pretty disappointing run of films made by DC and Warner Bros. So, when Wonder Woman 1984 released, I was expecting more of the same. I went into the film without really paying attention to reviews or anything like that, and whilst it's not like the film reinvented the wheel or even really improved on the original at all, I enjoyed it for what it was and thought it was a pretty solid sequel. But the next day I took a glance on Twitter and Reddit and yikes yikes yikes. There was a lot of hate coming towards the film and not just from reviewers or random faceless accounts. There were legit industry giants that were liking tweets or replying to fans that were just tearing this thing to shreds. Now I get it, not everything's going to be everybody's cup of tea but I still can't help but think the hate for this film is a bit overblown. And I'm not trying to be a blind fanboy. I get that the film has a lot of narrative issues and also some moral issues that need to be looked at. So, in the interest of fairness, I'll just go through them now. I think, narratively, there's two major overarching problems present within the movie. The villain's stories are convoluted, and Diana feels like the least important character in her own film. And we'll start with the villains. In trailers and whatnot, we're presented with Cheetah being the primary villain of the film. A character that can physically stand up to Wonder Woman. And it all starts off great. She's somebody down in her luck who looks up to Diana and wishes she could be like her. But once she has her powers, she loses what makes her special and becomes a force for evil. It's a pretty good, if a bit cliche, story. But then she just sort of hangs around and they don't really clash until the climax of the White House. And I know it's meant to be a slow burn, but I felt like they pulled the trigger way too late. She should have attacked her in Cairo or something instead, so she could have had a lot more time to shine as a villain instead of just being a henchman for Maxwell Lord. And that brings us to Lord, who I guess is a pretty cool villain, a fraudster, a failed businessman desperate to make himself seem like a success, but his storyline lacks all stakes, because literally everything bad he did got reversed completely, and then he gets to get away with it all and go back to his son whilst never really being sorry. He was only sorry because of the impact it had on his son. Whilst independently I think these two villains could have had really compelling stories having them fight against Diana, in one movie it negatively impacted the story to have them both competing for her attention. And that brings us to Diana's storyline. And I'm of two minds about her direction in this film. On the negative side, I just don't think it fits with how her character should be at this stage in her life. Steve died during World War I. He's been dead for 70 years. And yet she's so unconsolably heartbroken about his death that she can't move on or make a life for herself at all. I mean, her actual aunt died in the first one, and it's not like that's had her sitting around for decades moping. And then we see she's faced with this dramatic moral dilemma. Should she sacrifice Steve and save the world, or keep him and just let humanity enter a nuclear wasteland future? I get that they were trying to raise some significant stakes for the woman that took down the actual god of war, but for me it makes her seem significantly dumbed down. Plus, in the end, it's not her that ultimately chooses the right path. Steve keeps going on and on about how she needs to do this. This random guy is the voice of reason and strategy to an all-powerful demigod. It kind of flies in the face of the message of the first film to have Wonder Woman degraded to this pitiful loner character whose role in the film is to pine after her lost love. But on the other hand, I do think it was a little bit of a positive. It shows that Diana can be a strong and heroic figure whilst also clamouring for love. I generally don't like the argument that if a female character pines after a man or is romantic, it makes her weak. I think it's important to show that strong female characters can also love people and that doesn't diminish them. I think they did this really well in the first movie, but in this one they went way too hard on it, and I think that rubbed people the wrong way. Plus, there's also the fact that Diana and Steve sleep together using some random dude's body. Now that's a pretty interesting addition. Now when I was looking into this, I understand that there's a trope in 80s films for body switching to occur, and whilst that might have been acceptable back then, I think from a PC point of view, it was a really bad move and really predictable that this was going to get backlash. So in the end, I just don't know what they were thinking. There were so many other ways you could still bring Steve back. It's a wish from a magic crystal. He could have appeared out of thin air and you could accept that. And to top it off, the film uses the scene of an attempted rapist getting beaten and left for dead in the street as an example of how Cheetah's going too far and losing herself. I'm really not sure it's a great message to send, that rapists deserve mercy and compassion, but maybe that's just me. Now I understand those are some big flaws. I get that. But I don't think that's enough to sink the film or call it complete trash or a disaster of a movie. Despite there being some questionable choices of the storyline and direction the films took, I feel like the hate's very much disproportionate. Is it a top tier superhero film? No. As we stated before, the script and narrative pacing is very janky and awkward. 
But is it Justice League level? No. Is it Batman vs Superman level? No. For me, it's like Thor The Dark World. It's not hugely great, but it still does some things right. It's enjoyable for the action, and the visuals are still pretty exciting and dynamic. In any case, there's going to be a third installment, and hopefully that'll reflect the feel of the first film and grow Diana into a more fleshed out hero. But that's just my opinion, and now I'd like to hear yours. Did you like the new Wonder Woman? Hate it? What are your hopes for the third movie? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know.